Hey, I'm going to be talking about Emerson's essay on gifts. So first of all, I want to give you a couple of reasons to read the essay. Uh, reason number one, it's short. Uh, it's only a couple of pages long, so it's not really a huge commitment. You're still going to need to set a time, some time to read the essay because it's, it's pretty dense. And if you just breeze through it, you're not going to get much out of it. You're going to get something, but not much and it's it's like most reading of this kind you're going to get out of it as much as you put in uh, but reason number two if you read this essay you're going to be more thoughtful about what it means to be generous and gracious this isn't really an essay about being a better gift giver uh, it's not an instruction manual on how to give gifts right a lot of people think it is but it's not really it's probably even more about how to receive gifts than how to give them. Uh, and it's not easy to, to receive a gift graciously. So if you read this essay, you're going to be more thoughtful about generosity and graciousness. But you have to remember that this is an essay. Uh, Emerson was a big fan of Montaigne, who was the pioneer of this genre of the essay. And an essay is an attempt. Uh, it's a try at something. And you can imagine uh, trying to hit a target from a distance. Not everything's going to be a bullseye. Uh, Emerson's throwing things out there and, and seeing what lands. Uh, it, it's not a sermon either. Emerson, Emerson's not coming out of the gate and saying he knows the best way to give gifts and he's going to teach us how. It's more of an exploration of the topic. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a close look at a couple of the passages from the essay that readers tend to struggle with. I'm going to go into detail and really break them down. And hopefully that'll, that'll uh, put you in a good place to, to read and understand the rest of the essay. All right. So uh, the first thing that we see is this little poem at the top. It's a short little poem by Emerson, and, and really it's pretty simple, but it can be misunderstood. So let's take a look at it. Uh, we read, Gifts of one who loved me, Twas high time they came. When he ceased to love me, Time they stopped for shame. And really what's going on here is that the, the speaker is saying there are two kinds of gifts. Gifts from somebody who loves you, and gifts from somebody who doesn't love you or, or stopped loving you. And when you get a gift from somebody who loves you, that gift is given out of love, right? So you really enjoy the gift. You receive it willingly and readily and almost impatiently. You're saying to yourself, okay, when is the gift going to come? I can't wait. Uh, and when it comes, you say, finally, right? Finally, uh, it's high time this gift came. But uh, when somebody who doesn't love you gives you a gift, uh, that gift isn't given out of love, right? So you don't actually want it. You'd rather not have the gift. You're uh, suspicious of what it might mean, right? You're like, uh, why are you giving this to me? Do you want something from me? Are you trying to get me to do something for you, right? Uh, Emerson uh, is going to say a lot about how love is the genius and God of gifts. Anything that's given out of love is good. Uh, you can break all the rules, but if you're giving out of love, it's still good. So that's all that means. Now, uh, the first couple of sentences in the essay always trip people up. Uh, they read the first few lines and they're like, uh, what is this about bankruptcy, chancery? I don't get it. So uh, let's, let's take a look at this. It is said that the world is in a state of bankruptcy, that the world owes the world more than the world can pay and ought to go into chancery and be sold. So uh, it is said, this is like something that's a, a current topic of conversation. It's in the headlines. Uh, you bump into your neighbor and you make small talk about how much the world is in debt. Uh, and I think it's funny how Emerson's writing this uh, a really long time ago, but we still talk the same way uh, about the same things. We talk about national debt and consumer debt and, and student loan debt, and we're all in debt and, and it's just a debt crisis, right? 
The world is in debt. It's like the world needs to declare bankruptcy and go to bankruptcy court. Uh, that's what chancery is. It's bankruptcy court. Uh, it's kind of silly to imagine the world itself going to bankruptcy court, but that just gives us a, uh, gives us a picture of, of how dire the situation is, right? Now, uh, what does all this about debt and bankruptcy have to do with gifts? Actually, the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. Uh, but what, what Emerson says here is that our general indebtedness, the fact that we're all in debt, isn't the reason that it's hard for us to give gifts. And he says, I do not think this general insolvency, which involves in some sort all the population to be the reason of the difficulty experienced at Christmas and New Year and other times in bestowing gifts. So uh, Emerson is saying, it's true, we're all in debt up to our eyeballs, uh, but that's probably not the reason it's, it's hard to give gifts at Christmas and New Year. The real reason uh, is it's hard to choose gifts, right? It's hard to pick out a gift. Uh, and he says, but the impediment lies in the choosing. If at any time it comes into my head that a present is due from me to somebody, I'm puzzled what to give uh, until the opportunity is gone. And by the way, uh, this is where the idea of debt or obligation comes up again. Uh, a present is due. Uh, you owe a present to somebody. So it's kind of like you're in debt. You're obligated to give. But giving a gift is also being generous. Right? So it's like the gift can't decide what it is. Is it free or is it obligatory? And this is a real rabbit hole that you could go down. Uh, but Emerson is saying, choosing gifts is so hard and he's so puzzled that he can't decide on a gift before the opportunity is gone. Right? And the next thing that he says is, is about how flowers and fruits make good presents. And the funny thing is that uh, this is where a lot of people start reading. They look at the first few lines and they're like, I don't get that, I don't get that, I don't get that. Oh, but this, I understand, right? And they come out of the essay thinking uh, what Emerson says is that flowers and fruits are good gifts. And that's kind of right, that's kind of true, right? Because he does say that, but he says that right after he says, it's hard to choose a gift and he's really bad at it and it's puzzling to him, right? So we have to read this as a lot more tentative than it might seem by itself. Uh, uh, remember, again, Emerson is making an essay. He's taking a stab at it. Uh, it's like he's testing out these ideas. He's saying, hmm, isn't it the case that flowers and fruits make really good gifts? Why is that? Uh, does it have something to do with their lack of utility? Maybe, right? So uh, it's really important to keep uh, everything and keep, keep all that in mind as you read through this essay because uh, otherwise you're going to be saying to yourself, wait a minute, didn't Emerson say the exact opposite thing in the last paragraph? Why is he contradicting himself so much? But really he's, he's exploring these ideas, right? Maybe flowers and fruits are good gifts because you can't really assign a price to them. Uh, maybe gifts that you buy aren't really that meaningful. But when somebody comes your way and, and you can help them, meeting their needs is a really good gift. So food or water or shoes, these really useful things, can be really good gifts, right? So uh, I think if you keep that in mind, that this is an essay and, and an exploration, you're going to have a much better time with the essay as long as you're reading closely, right? Uh, but let me go to the end of the essay because uh, the last paragraph is a really good way of, of summing up and, and uh, wrapping up this entire essay. So Emerson comes back to this idea that when you give out of love, it's always a good gift. He says, I fear to breathe any treason against the majesty of love, which is the genius and, the, and God of gifts, and to whom we must not affect to prescribe. Let him give kingdoms of flower leaves indifferently. This is prerogative, 
and not to be limited by our municipal rules. So uh, love has a kind of royal prerogative. Whatever it does is right. Uh, rules don't apply to it, right? And, and Emerson isn't just talking about romantic love here. He, he's talking about genuine, deep love. When it comes to that kind of love, love can do no wrong. Uh, but what about more common gifts and, and common relationships? This is where the municipal rules come into play, right? These are rules that regular city folk have to follow. Uh, well, Emerson says, for the rest, I like to see we cannot be bought and sold. So you don't want to give gifts to make someone like you. Uh, and it doesn't work anyway, right? Emerson says, when I have attempted to, it, uh, to join myself to others by services, it proved an intellectual trick no more. They eat your service like apples and leave you out. But love them and they feel you and delight in you all the time. But I want to come back to, to one line here and leave you with this. Emerson says, The best of hospitality and of generosity is also not in the will, but in fate. And this has to do with the idea that you can't really give a gift to a true friend or a magnanimous person. A, a magnanimous person is a big-hearted person. Uh, they receive your gift so graciously that you're immediately in debt to them. They express so much genuine gratitude, real unaffected gratitude, that you're stunned and you're left saying, who am I that you're so grateful to me? I should be the one who's grateful to you. Uh, I'm so grateful that I was given the chance to be helpful to you. So uh, that's what it means that uh, the best of hospitality and generosity isn't in the will, but in fate. It's not that you go out and, and decide to do a good deed for someone. These chances to be of service to someone just come your way out of the blue. And when we see them, we take them up right away. And, and we're so grateful we get the chance to be of help. And that's kind of beautiful. Hey, thanks for listening in. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what other sorts of things that you'd like to see. Thanks.